These work better on flat baits, like this little John I'm about to drop it onto. And you can pretty much see what you want to do with this particular bait. And with us, we're going to come right down now. I usually try on these baits and not hit the cheek, not do that gill plate. So you kind of want to line up as best you can and center that to where the center, if I can do it without knocking it off center, you want that center to come down the supposed lateral line as best you can. And again, we're using very low air pressure on this. Line that up. It lays pretty much flat and the pressure that you use on this is also going to help keep this flat to the, the bait. But you, again, you don't want to be right on here. You want to be back a little bit. And come right down that center. Go through it a couple of times. Pull it off. And there's your pattern. And there you have it. Very easy, very simple. Now when you come back and do the other side, what I like to do is pull this paint down. That's why I've always, you're always going to see these videos with scrap paper. Because you don't, if you were to, you have to do the reverse on the opposite side. If you were to lay that with wet paint on it, it's going to screw the other side up. You don't want to do that. So we've pulled that off because this side is now going to stick to the bottom of the bait. I'm going to heat set this and we're going to do the other side. We've heat set this. There's the pattern. Now most people think of a lighter colored bait and the standard, the, the status quo is to put black or dark stripes on a bait. I like thinking out of the box because you can lay light onto dark as long as you have enough of an opaque base, especially with white but this has got a little silver in it as well. Basically, it's the same stuff that we did when we did the, um, the Thule scaling on that blue one. Okay. And you can see where it's darker in the middle. If you concentrate on that lateral line with your pattern and just spray the middle of your bait, it will naturally fade on both the top and the bottom. That's what you want. You don't want those heavy lines going across because then you're going to have to recoat the top. So whenever you can, Try and concentrate on that middle area and just let the airbrush do the work for you. You don't have to go up and down, just in the middle. That's it. So for the other side, I'm a little bit backwards. <laughs> Some of you guys know that by now. Um, all I'm doing because I'm holding this with my left hand, instead of trying to do it like this and hold it, I'm just going to flip it from here to here. And then this, actually it would work okay if we use the same side, but I'm going to flip it. And then you remember that little divot right up against the gill plate. So we're flipping it over. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the bait. Hold it in place. You don't have to rush through it. And then just line this up to where you can press down with your thumb and then use this kind of as a wheel and line it up to where this entire middle pattern you should still see the middle back where your eyelid is. It's the best way I know how to describe it. If you guys have a better way of describing the chaos that I just tried to explain, by all means, please help me out. Sometimes I don't talk in full sentences, but it makes sense, to me at least. And I'm just going back and forth. A couple of times. And that's it. I'm not going to move this while I put this in the holder. Two nails. That's all I'm doing. And then pull it up. Sorry, just hit the GoPro. But there you have it. That's it. Now, oops, right? Everybody asks about mistakes. It happens. And if you guys can see this, I've got just a little bit of paint where I didn't want it to be. Okay, that's all right. Take a little bit of, you can use reducer or cleaner. I like to use the cleaner. Barely put a drop on here. 
Okay, barely. Maybe a half a drop. And then just rub that off. And the reason I'm able to do that with a certain amount of efficiency is because the base coat that I spray on my baits usually comes about 24 hours before I put down any additional coats. Now the other side we didn't mess up. But there, it's vanished. And there's your zebra pattern. It's very cool. Um, you can, you can kind of do a fade, like if you wanted to kind of finish this off, you have to be a little bit careful with what you're doing. But you can kind of just come in, hit that edge. Just to get a little bit of fade on that edge. And that should, that should line it up pretty well. There is the zebra or tiger, whatever striping you want to call this, but in a reverse pattern. Next, I told you guys before, if you want to see what a pattern looks like before you actually lay it onto a bait, the best way I know how to do that is with scrap paper and a little bit of black in your airbrush chamber. So we're going to throw some wicked colors in here. This is the, uh, I think this is the detail black. Yep, detail black. And uh, I'm on 30 PSI now. I'm going to bring that down even lower. I hope you can hear the difference in the pressure. You guys have seen me work with this pattern before, so I'm not going to do a whole lot with it other than to show you what it looks like. Makes a very unique pattern one of my favorites. Let's show you some other stuff. Now these are art tools, most of them. This is a top, I've actually put two of these together myself and on larger baits, glide baits, swim baits, these are some of the lines that I use for striper. If you want those striper lines. This, this pattern also works pretty well for a tricked out American flag. And there's your pattern. So you can do that with just about anything that you have if you want to see what it's going to look like before you actually put it on the bait. Just use a little bit of black. And this is also a really good way to practice trigger control and airbrush pressure. And you can see that I'm outlining. I'm not spraying on the paper. I'm spraying the stencil and that's going to help with shading. Can you guys, hopefully you guys can see this. See how it's dark up here and then it shades itself down light. The airbrush is doing the work for you. Um, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time and it's really not that complicated. As long as you can put a pattern down and you're fairly efficient with your trigger control, it, it's really going to go a long way. So practice makes perfect. We're going to describe that a little bit more in depth with this next one. So you guys have seen, or at least some of you might have seen, the zombie series that I've put out, the exposed muscle and stencil. This is one of the bases, and you can see I still have the, the red um, for this one. So you just really, and you want to get, if you have low pressure, and you can see how you can hear that coming out, but nothing's coming out. Now as I pull the trigger back, then I get that line. So you can get a little bit closer on here for detailing. You'll notice I have not changed my needle. Most of the time you don't need to. But just take scrap paper and run yourself around. Stencils like this. And one thing that helps if you want some real good fading, and I'll show you this as I come up, as I come off this last one, I'm pulling this back and I'm angling in. So you really 
have that shaded effect. And there's your shading. Cool pattern. One of my faves. There you go. I'll adjust my light as we go. If I bring it down too much, it's going to not be good. I just have to remember to tilt my head. So there's a couple of things that you can do with the art tools and just practice. Practice, practice, practice. The next thing that I want to show you guys is how to cut your own stencil. And I, I think maybe that's what some of you guys have been waiting for. But I'm just going to use this. Okay, and then we're going to outline a bait because what stencil do we want to cut? Okay, it varies bait per bait. Um, I don't use the same size stencil on every bait that I do. So we're going to do a little John because I happen to have one lined up here. And I've got one that's already base coated. Okay. This is where your Sharpie comes in. And if you're afraid of making the lines and getting that Sharpie ink, you can use a ballpoint pen. As long as you can see it. That's pretty much what matters. You can use a, a thinner pen. These are the pens that I use to sign my baits, these Uniball Vision Elites. Description's going to be below. But you want to set this up, and we can actually do it here since this is a smaller bait. You have to show the bill, show that bill point on both sides. All we're doing is outlining this bait. Put my finger down to steady that, and then just running right around the top. The bottom is not quite as important. As long as you show this bill point, this bill point is key. You really want to make sure you outline that. Now what I'm going to do for the top, is I'm actually going to go over that a little bit. Because we really just want to get the, the style of this bait. I can pretty much leave this alone, but I do want to come around the rear, and the reason we do that is to, wherever you're stenciling, you want to be able to see the end of your bait. Okay, and then this is important because this is going to get cut out. So that when you lay this point down, this is how you line up a stencil that's hand cut, at least how I do it. You lay this down on this lip and it's not going anywhere, right? So that way, when you flip this over and do the other side, you can come in on the other side and your stencil is going to be the exact same place as it was on the opposite side. That makes things so much easier. Okay, so for this we're just going to do a, a simple three-line perch pattern. And we're going to come down and we can draw that out first. Okay, so when I'm drawing this, actually this actually is an accident, but it kind of gives me an idea on this bait where my gill plate is. And I don't want to mess with my gill plate, that's one of the things that I never do. Now I might come along and um, shade this gill plate in since there's not much of a defined one on these little johns but I know that my gill plate roughly is going to be right about where this line is on this bait that was a happy accident and then we just draw our squiggles in and I did one too long on purpose because I want to show you how to fix that So, you want to look and make sure, when you set this back on, you want to be able to feel it. You know how like when you're sizing up a shoe at the shoe store, you want to be able to feel where the bottom of that bait is. And that's one another reason that I like these thin pieces of cardboard, is that I can feel where the bottom of that bait is. So I know if I've gotten these lines too long, I can switch that or at least not cut it. When I cut it up, this should be okay. But my bait stops here. So I have to remember to bring this down further there. So you can see where the bait kind of wraps around. Now I could also angle it down like that, but still. But this, this one, that's good to go. Take your X-Acto knife. Just 
kind of cut. Make sure you have a sharp point. That's key also. And again, I've got that black loaded in my chamber. Let me just pull that off. Pull that off. And with this one, we want to remember, we need to come down a little bit, a little bit further. Just kind of squiggle it as we go. Now we have three lines. That's pretty much all we need. You want to see what it's going to look like. And the other thing, again, trigger control. And then don't hit the paper, hit the stencil. And that works for every kind of stencil you cut. Well, some of them are a little bit more complex than that. But that is the pattern that you're going to lay on your bait. Amazing craw patterns out there. Absolutely amazing craw patterns. I like to cut my own. And for that, again, we're going back to the Bill Lewis. And you can see that I've made edges and I've kind of moved the uh, and you can you can kind of modify this to how you like but it's like a wheel it, it's, it's like a wheel you can turn it just like that I've got a little crawl claw in the middle I've got that collar so we're gonna show you the crawl and you can see that this is notched in. I'll show it to you here before I show it to you on that wiggle wart. We're doing a lemon tree wiggle wart. And again, stay on the stencil. And that's what it looks like. And you've got the notches in it, which I've done. Just cut that little notch in with the exacto knife. And pretty much once you get the the feel of how your airbrush is going to behave when you're working with stencils, the sky's the limit. The one thing that I like doing with craws is making that a little bit uneven and you can really see the detail and this is a good contrasty bait you can really see that detail and the notching when you do that so let's get started I like to bring this around the back of the eyes and we're doing the wiggle warts just because I've got a bunch of them set up old um, throwaway baits basically so there's that Okay, we're going to use the same. You really only need to define that it is a crawl. You don't need to do a ton of lines in this. Always do the back first on a crawl pattern. Always do the back first, the top, on a crawl pattern. Here's why. When you turn this bait over, of course this would be on the one that I'm not going to be able to turn it over easy on. Of course, Murphy's Law. Okay, when you turn this over, you already have a guide set up. For me, don't need to go very far down the side. But you, you, can, you can just follow that line right back down. Okay, see how that does? So that you always have something to line it up with. There's that. 
Okay, we're going to stay on this side. Good grief. There we go. Seriously? There we go. Must have a little tiny clog in it. Black has a tendency to clog up a lot faster. There we go. Than other colors. Black and white, for some reason, they're thicker. And. Okay. And it's pretty much shaded itself because you're staying on the edges of the stencil and you're not directly spraying onto the bait. Always use those stencils as your guide. Bring it back over. There's your guidelines. And with this one, it's, I always forget it's the opposite. need to bring this tail piece down too much. Just enough to where you can see the definition. And then always just pick up where your line's left off and it does take practice. It takes practice and trigger control to get these down. And not overlap. But again, okay, let's make a, a visible mistake. What happens if you do? Oops, that shouldn't be there. Again, because I've put my prime coat of paint on well in advance of this, we can take this little bit, just a drop or so of cleaner, gently lift this off. Water works too, cleaner seems to work the best. And this is how you erase the mistakes. like it was never there. Okay, now we've got our top and our back. Looks pretty cool, huh? Now we're gonna do the back end of this. And because it's a wiggle wart, it's a little bit tricky. Um, it kind of wobbles when you put it down, so I'll keep it on this. And it does have, it has that eye right there. So just like that, stand that up. Now we're going to do the undersides. One of the things that I've been doing lately, I didn't used to do it, but I kind of like doing it now because it kind of gives the presentation of that segmented creature, is that I will continue the underside all the way onto the bill. A little bit darker, just a little bit more definition. There we go. Can feel that that's getting a little squishy. I need a new spring in there, and I got a great tip the other day off of the Brotherhood page. Good grief. Um, when that spring gets spongy, there we go. When your spring gets spongy in your trigger, you can uh, use a ballpoint pen. You'll notice when I'm doing this, folks, when I'm not getting anything out, I go off of the bait. Okay, I'm always going to go off the bait to blow that out. Never, never do it on the bait. And there you have it. There's your bottom. You have the top, you have the bottom, and now we just need to do the eyes. And these things do dry pretty quick. So it's pretty easy to touch almost immediately after you've initially sprayed that crawl layering. 
on there. And uh, you guys should make up your own crawl patterns. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Oh, I would have to pick the one helping hands. This is my oldest. This was the first helping hands I ever got. But it's, um, this thing sticks out and the rest of mine don't. So, yeah, it's not my favorite, but it, it does what it's supposed to do. So now we're going to come back and we're going to lay these. Now with wiggle warts, if you guys are not familiar with them, most of you should be, but if you're not, um, wiggle warts don't have eyes that you can 3D. You have to paint the eyes. And that takes a lot of pressure. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a little bit of pressure and a lot of patience. And there you have it. Now, if you guys want to splatter, you can see I'm making a mess already, but you can do that by taking the tip off of your airbrush and just laying down a little bit of pattern. You just want to kind of rough that up a little bit. That's it. You're done. <laughs>